Welcome back to Barnville Theaters. We're doing a lot of what we have. We are running 10-3 wire through the walls, into the ceiling, at various locations in this building. Uh, why is that? Well, I want to have a lift, a compressor, and some way of heating and cooling this building. And running 10-3 lets me uh, pick out what pieces I want and doesn't really restrain me too, too much. So that seemed like the best situation, although a little expensive. Along with the 10-3 wire, we'll also be running 12-2. That will provide power to each outlet on the wall for various things like bench top grinders, corded drills, chargers, or whatever you have. So let's get into it. Running 240 is basically just as simple as running 120. There's just an extra wire that's hot. The challenging part in this is that I don't have any of the equipment I plan to run. So, for example, if I had a lift, I could install the lift, then I could uh, run the electrical to the exact spot I need it. However, here, since I don't have that, what I'll be doing is running the electrical to the approximate location, and then hopefully those items have long enough cords to actually plug in, or I might have to run a, uh, an extension cord. That was one of the harder things I've done. Around that corner, took me forever. But I got it! that run from the breaker box all the way to where roughly our air compressor will be. So it's time to cut the wire at the breaker box, but once, but first, we have to finish pulling out the rest of this weird random slack that I have and uh, just pull it on through. So we'll get to that and then we'll uh, wire it up over here. I went on Google and looked up the installation procedures and they recommended 9 to 10 feet off of this front wall. So I laid out the tape measure, saw where 9 to 10 feet were, and I made a couple of marks right here and right here. Um, then an asymmetrical lift puts 30% of the vehicle in front of the post. So my truck is just about 20 feet long, so that would make it 6 feet. So if we did 9 feet, we would have take subtract 6 feet from 9 feet, and that would be 3 feet. And that puts you somewhere in this ballpark, right? So, over here, I also would like a bench, so I've been taking stuff off. I can set it right on the bench, and I don't lose anything. So we only have roughly, probably about a foot. Well, if you go to that 10-foot recommendation, now you have uh, four feet between the end of the truck and the wall. The bench takes up probably two feet, so you have a two-foot space, which would work. But I wanted a little bit more, so I looked at 11 feet, and I also looked at 12 feet, and I really liked where 12 feet ended. It uh, gave me plenty of room to like bring a tool in here. I wouldn't really have to worry about hitting the truck or anything else. And then I also. 
also looked at the spacing behind the truck and where that would be in the garage door. So my thinking is, since asymmetrical lifts put 30% of the vehicle in the front and 70% of the back, uh, probably if one percentage is going to change, it's probably going to be the percentage in front of the post. So maybe it's more like 35% in the front and 65 in the back. So I'd rather give myself a little extra room in front than in the rear. From there, I made my 12 foot mark and then I measured the doorway and the space on the, this side of the door to the wall, which is 10 inches, the doorway is 12 feet, so 144 inches. I found the halfway point, I made a mark there, and then I looked up the overall width of the two post lift, and that's 141 inches. So I had to go, let's see, what would that be? Uh, 70 and a half inches in this direction, which puts me somewhere over here, and then 70 and a half over here, and the post will be centered on the garage door and it should look pretty good and be pretty functional. The only downside is that post might be a little close to the wall, but um, if I have to get around the truck, I guess I can just walk around and rather be centered. So that's where it is. We're on to running the wire and uh, mounting the uh, junction box where the outlet will be, where the lift actually plugs in into the ceiling. Uh, we don't have that junction box quite yet, but we can run the wire there and it all stop what we do. Started nailing it to the wrong side of the rafter. So, gotta pull those staples out and run it on the other side, which I don't think will be as big of a deal, and I don't think there's too much risk of me messing up the wire. So, I'll get to that. That sucks. I switched which side of the rafter the wire was ran on and stapled it all alongside that rafter, came down, stapled it to this board here, and now I ended up with this amount of slack right here. So now I just gotta pull this back through and I'm gonna leave extra here because I'd rather leave extra and not need it than need it and run that length of very expensive wire again. We're doing electrical outlets. So I have a junction box in my hand and that's where we'll start. Uh, I bought these junction boxes. They're actually vertical rather than horizontal. We have horizontal ones. We have horizontal ones. We have horizontal ones, like the ones probably in your house. Um, I'm not entirely sure why I did that, but I did. Um, these ones are a little bit different. They have screws instead of nails. Uh, most ones I've ever seen, just you hammer the nail into the wall. But these have screws, so if the depth isn't quite right, you can unscrew them and adjust them to the proper depth. So it's my first time installing them, so I kind of wanted that, uh, that luxury there. Since this is my first time mounting junction boxes, I did my homework. I looked up how far apart junction boxes should be spaced apart, what size wire I should use, and how many you can have on a circuit. So to answer the first question, for a normal home, they suggest every six feet. Well, this is a working garage, so I wanted that probably spaced in a little closer. I got my tape measure and I made a mark where I thought one should go and pulled the tape measure out and I noticed every four feet, there's another stud. So that's how I made the decision to mount them every four feet. Then the next question, what size wire do you use? From what I've read, most people use 12 gauge wire, although 14 gauge or something heavier duty, uh, you can also use. If you use 14 gauge, you have to put on a 15 amp circuit, which doesn't let, allow you to use as many outlets on that circuit. 12 gauge lets you put enough on one where you can probably do a whole room. Um, 
this is a bigger space, so we're not gonna be able to do that, but 12 gauge is cheaper than 10 gauge, so that's what we chose. Then the third question, how many outlets can you put on a circuit? Well, you can technically put as many as you want on one circuit, but that's not what you should do. What you should do is picture yourself in, the, in your house, in your garage, and see where most of your draw is going to occur. So if you have some high drawing appliances, you want less outlets or receptacles. If you have uh, not too many outlets or ones that are only going to be used to you know, maybe plug in a vacuum every once in a while, you can put more in that circuit. So what they suggested is no more than eight. So I'm going to follow that rule, no more than eight, unless I'm on the very last one in a circuit. Now we can get to mounting these and running some 12 gauge wire. Here you see me with a screwdriver and a hammer in my hand. I simply place the screwdriver where the wire would be inserted and lightly tap with a hammer. This breaks the flashing and allows the wire to be ran. I work my way down the wall and follow back around running each section of wire. I will then come back later and clean this up. This is as far as we can go at this point. The next steps are to insulate and hang drywall. Then we can come back to install the outlets. You will see these next steps in future videos. If you like following along with my project, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future videos. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and be sure to leave a comment. All the tools shown in this video are listed below in the description, so be sure to check them out. 